Ladies and gentlemen, you feel that? We are less than a week away from the commencement of the 2023 NFL season. But first, roster updates on the final 53, the practice squad, and early thoughts on the Giants' week one Sunday night football matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Let's get into it. I'm Nick Filato, Big Blue View, you know how we do. Gotta say, some interesting moves for the Giants on the final 53-man roster. Giants go with four running backs, six wide receivers, one player in each group I want to focus on, running back Gary Brightwell and Wandell Robinson. Let's start with the 2021 six-round pick out of Arizona. This coaching staff must hold Brightwell in high esteem. It's not common that a day three pick from a previous regime makes the roster after missing all of training camp with a knee injury. It's no secret the 24-year-old running back is an ace special teams player with 487 snaps for Thomas McGahee through two seasons. He also has five tackles on special teams throughout his career, but he's been used sparingly as a runner. Brightwell has 31 carries for 140 yards with a tutty, which puts him at an average of 4.5 yards per carry. I, for one, believe Brightwell's chances to make the roster were unlikely with the rise of Deshaun Corbin, who, now accepted a spot in Carolina's practice squad after not making the Giants' initial 53-man roster. Keeping four backs isn't a surprise for an offense that runs pony package and sometimes 31 or 30 personnel in a full house look. You want more backs out there, more healthy backs, backs that know your system. And we saw some good snaps from Gary Brightwell when he was given the shot last season. But an off-injured six-round pick who missed all of training camp and wasn't drafted by this regime made the team That's impressive, and also telling. The Giants put a lot of value on their special teams unit. As we'll discuss later by one of the Giants' practice squad additions who plays the same position as Brightwell, but is more than a decade older than the former Arizona Wildcat. Brightwell should operate as the primary kick returner for the Giants, while also joining Carter Coughlin and Cam Brown as core special teams players on both coverages and returns. Brightwell did practice on Thursday. Wondell Robinson was activated off the pup list, which is excellent news for the second-year wide receiver coming off of a Week 11 torn ACL against the Detroit Lions last season. Robinson is running around at practice and may be slowly ingratiated back into the fold since the Giants have depth at wide receiver, and specifically in the slot. Robinson was hand-picked in the top 50 by this regime and figures to have an important role in 2023. New York could have given Robinson an extra few weeks of rest by leaving him on the pup, which would have rendered Robinson inactive through four games. They didn't, which is a great sign for his health. However, there were some unfortunate injuries in preseason week three. Special teamer and wide receiver Bryce Ford Wheaton tore his ACL and is on season-ending IR, along with tight end Chris Myrick, who broke his hand. Tight end Tommy Sweeney also battled a scary medical incident before the Jets' preseason game. Right now, there's only three tight ends on the roster and two are former wide receivers in Darren Waller and Lawrence Cager. Looking at the roster, the Giants are weak at offensive tackle behind their starters Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal. Fun fact, that's four first names. Obscure, but we always heard never to trust a man with two first names. But what about a tackle pairing with four? In regards to football, it's hard not to trust Andrew Thomas. Evan Neal took his punches in year one, but we hope to see developmental progress. Parry them jabs, Evan. It gets dubious behind those two, though. As of now, Matt Parrott is the swing tackle, and Parrott looked rough against the Jets' third team, so stay healthy first-team tackles. In a pinch, maybe the Giants would try Joshua Zudu or Marcus McKethan at tackle, but that's not their ideal position. Despite the recent additions and the positionless nature of Wink Martindale's personnel, I have a slight concern at edge, albeit the two trades for Boogie Basham and Isaiah Simmons assuages that even though they're completely different players. More on them in a bit. The other position group that gives me some concern is the cornerback room, and I love the young players on the roster. Even with that love, I'd be remiss if I didn't express trepidation about starting two rookies against Dallas in week one. The Giants have flexibility on the back end with Bobby McCain and Nick McLeod, the latter of which is reportedly moving back to the cornerback room. McCain, he is in the concussion protocol right now, but I hear it's the late stages of that protocol. We'll have to wait and see. The retention of Darnay Holmes on a pay cut and McLeod shifting back to the cornerback room is important for this roster. Not only are the Giants looking to start two rookie cornerbacks in nickel personnel, but their presumed third option would have been 22-year-old Cordell Flott, who falls into a very similar category with Trey Hawkins III and Deontay Banks. Young, developing, unproven players with upside. Of course, they're all behind Adoree Jackson on the depth chart. 
the mere presence of Holmes and McLeod in the cornerback room gives Martindale valuable options that have experience in the system. If any of the three young players struggle, the more competent options, the better. Shane was also active on the trade market as the deadline for final cuts was closing in. Shane traded a seventh round selection for a defensive chess piece in Isaiah Simmons, a former top 10 pick, and also swapped a 2025 sixth for the Bills' seventh in that same year for Boogie Basham, a defensive end Shane helped draft in the second round of the 2021 draft. Both players are upgrades over the previous options at those positions. Basham will operate in a role similar to Jihad Ward, and Simmons is going to be an exceptional asset for Wink Martindale's third down pressure package. His ability to execute any assignment post-snap versus the pass will be maximized by this defensive coordinator. He doesn't have the expectations of a top 10 pick here in New York. We don't need him to be out there and base personnel on rundowns. Just allow him to thrive in Martindale's exotic, pressured defense where you're going to see blitzes, fire zone blitzes, simulated pressure, and advantageous rush designs as we did on Simmons' first third down against the Jets. It was also a pleasant surprise to see both Jordan Riley and DJ Davidson make the initial 53-man roster. Can't be shocked about the former after his preseason, but the latter and interior offensive lineman Shane Lemieux weren't on my final roster. Although I believe the Lemieux's cross-training at center could have secured him that job. It's important to note, according to ESPN's Field Yates, the Giants did submit a waiver claim on former Bills guard Nick Broker, but the Texans were awarded the player since the Giants were 26th in waiver priority. So maybe Lemieux's roster spot isn't totally secure. If the Giants do opt to add a veteran interior offensive lineman, Lemieux would likely land on the practice squad with several other familiar players. Here's a list of the Giants practice squad players who spent their training camp in East Rutherford. Quarterback Tommy DeVito, wide receiver Cole Beasley, tight end Ryan Jones, defensive lineman Ryder Anderson, edge O'Shane Zimenez, edge Tamon Fox, inside linebacker Deontay Johnson, defensive back Amani Oruwarie, defensive back Alex Cook, and linebacker Darian Beavers, who the Giants believed would pass through waivers after recently recovering from his torn ACL. As previously stated, Corbin signed with the Panthers practice squad, and David Sills signed with the Broncos practice squad. Pour one out for 13, and pour a fresh one for the kid. Pour another two out for Tyree Phillips and Jamon Green, who were released from the practice squad on Thursday. The Giants also signed six players from other teams to their practice squad. I watched some tape on each, and here's a brief summary. We're going to start with Tyree Jackson, he was a six foot seven, two hundred and fifty pound tight end, a former college quarterback at Buffalo, who was with Shane and Brian Dable with the Buffalo Bills as a UDFA back in 2019. I saw him down at the Senior Bowl that year, and he's a massive person with incredible length, who is new to the tight end position. He has 205 offensive snaps under his belt, with three catches for 22 yards and a 2021 touchdown against the Dallas Cowboys. He was a member of the Philadelphia Eagles, though, so that's kind of gross. He's only 25 years old, and he moves very well when climbing up to the second level. He's a smooth athlete. However, he's not very physical. He's new to the trenches. What do you expect? We'll have leverage concerns while blocking in line, but should provide similar athletic upside, but maybe a little less than a player like Lawrence Cager. Heck, he could be the Giants' fourth option at quarterback behind Tommy DeVito. Giants also added offensive lineman Jalen Mayfield, a third-round pick out of Michigan by the Falcons in 2021. He came out of the draft young, and his pre-draft process was just bad. He tested poorly, had short arms for a tackle, and honestly, his college tape was rife with technique errors. Mayfield had only 15 college starts under his belt and left college after his medical redshirt sophomore season. That was probably a mistake. He should have stayed in college. He unfortunately missed the 2022 season with a back injury and just had a terrible preseason, and the Falcons were done with him. He's got the frame, he's got the size, but his tape, when healthy, it's not good. He surrendered 57 pressures and 11 sacks in 622 pass blocking snaps in 2021. Maybe a healthy, fresh start on a team that isn't going to force him to prematurely start can help Mayfield develop. The 23 year old certainly needed a change of scenery and a different approach because the NFL has not been kind to this young man. On the flip side of things, the NFL has blessed 35-year-old running back Tywin Jones, who had two separate stints with the Buffalo Bills while Joe Shane and Brian Dable were up there. Jones is another special teams ace with 48 career tackles on those units. 
He only has three kick returns and one punt return since 2018, so don't expect him to do that. And that punt return was muffed, eh, so not great, but he's an asset in coverage. Jones has played in 137 career games with only 53 carries for 233 yards. For those who suck at math like me, that's 4.2 yards per carry. He's also caught 18 passes for 256 yards and a tutty. Jones attended Eastern Washington and was a fourth-round pick by the Raiders in 2011, a year before 30-year-old Cooper Cup arrived on that same very campus. Only then he wasn't 30 years old. He was much younger. Anyways, the Giants also signed defensive back Caleb Hayes and offensive tackle Jalen Thomas to the practice squad. Hayes is an undrafted kid cornerback this season out of BYU who is 5'11", 194 pounds. He spent his training camp with the Jaguars. He had 23 passes defended and zero interceptions at BYU. Perhaps he got some butterfingers there because he can get his hand on the football, but he can't secure it. Thomas is a UDFA out of SMU that was with the Ravens. He played five years at SMU. Last season, he played every single offensive line position with center being the least occupied of the five, and yet he still had 88 snaps there. It's impressive. Bobby Johnson wanted versatility. Apparently, Jalen Thomas has just that. Thomas only allowed six pressures through 452 pass-blocking snaps last season. He is now on the practice squad. And then there is wide receiver Dennis Houston, or maybe it's Houston, shout out New York. Houston, Houston, spent his training camp in Dallas. Is he a spy? Is he committing legal football espionage just like defector Sean Harlow is currently conducting for Jerry? No, probably not. But the Giants did add the 6'1", 198-pound 2022 UDFA out of Western Illinois. Houston caught two of six passes for 16 yards in his rookie season during the regular season. He had several collegiate stops before Western Illinois. He went to Houston Baptist and Fullerton College, but he had solid production during his three-year stint at the directional Illinois school. We've had some good times with those programs, Giants fans, and we've had some not-so-good times. Back to Houston. He caught 169 passes for 2,039 yards and 11 touchdowns for the Leathernecks. (laughs) Leathernecks. What a name, am I right? Two for hundred, if you know, you know. With Sills gone, Houston is the only outside wide receiver on the practice squad. But even with the Giants resembling the MGM Grand, the slot machine, they're still deep at the receiver position, and I expect slot-profiled receivers like Sterling Shepard, Jalen Hyatt, and Paris Campbell to align on the outside in certain situations. These are great times, ladies and gentlemen. Giants vs. Dallas, week one, is less than two weeks away. If the Giants want to experience success as they enjoyed in 2022, they have to win divisional games. It's so difficult to make the playoffs with one divisional win. But the Giants did just that after sweeping the AFC South. The AFC East is not the AFC South. And you know what? There are some really good teams in the NFC West as well. This schedule is tough. But the Giants are well prepared, well coached, and have an influx of new talent that's upgraded the critical vulnerabilities from the unlikely nine-win regular season team we experienced last year. And they got the first crack of matching their divisional win total from last season in a home week one bout against the Dallas Cowboys. Pulling them shadows, boys. Seize the day. Thank you, everyone, for checking us out. I'm Nick Filato. Have a lovely night.